A new application for PF is in a split air conditioning or self-contained system. Here the condenser is larger and more accessible than for other applications. Its servicing and especially repair can be accomplished without removing it from the unit. This video is aimed at presenting a repair technique to be used in the field when the condenser is accidentally damaged. We will start by reviewing the equipment needed. A vacuum pump, cleaner safety solvent such as alcohol, stainless steel wire brush, utility knife, hot air gun, and of course the repair material are all that are needed. The repair material is a two-part epoxy resin and hardener. It comes as a ratio pack like this and is applied with a spiral mixer and gun. This particular material is sold by Johnson Manufacturing as their repair bond product. We will give you an address and telephone number at the end of this demonstration. Finding the leak is often the hardest part of making this repair. An oil stain is often a telltale sign. On this condenser, however, the telltale sign is damaged fins and a nick in the tube. As in any repair procedure to air conditioning tubing, whether it be steel, copper, or aluminum, it is important to clean the area. In this repair, safety solvent and a stainless steel wire brush are used to prepare the surface. It is okay to get some of the solvent into the tube. We need to get a good look at the leak. However, don't brush too hard. You only want to remove surface dirt. Usually the leak will be ragged and smeared over, and this leak is no exception. Before proceeding, the leak should be opened with a utility knife. This exposes only the damaged passageways in the tube and provides good access for the epoxy. After opening the leak, the tube should look like this illustration. A little more safety solvent will remove any remaining oil and chips from the leaking area. One of the secrets to getting a long-lasting, tough repair has to do with getting epoxy into the tube. A fairly long plug inside will ensure success. Pushing the epoxy in is easily done with a small vacuum pump, like that used to evacuate the system before recharging with refrigerant. The vacuum pump is now connected to the high side of the system. Before starting with the epoxy application, make sure the system is thoroughly evacuated. Any remaining refrigerant may cause leaks through the repaired area. Preparing the epoxy is the next step. This involves loading the ratio pack into the applicator and attaching the mixing nozzle. The first half tube of epoxy should be discarded. This will assure the mixing is proper. Turn the vacuum pump on and apply a little epoxy to the leak. You should see it immediately disappear into the tube. What you want to have happen is for the epoxy to plug the tube upstream and downstream of the leak, like in this illustration. At this point, the repair is almost complete. The vacuum pump is now disconnected from the unit and air allowed to re-enter the system through the valve. When you look at the repair, it may appear that the hole in the tube has reopened. However, this means the epoxy has entered the hole and is affecting a good repair. Applying some heat will partially cure the epoxy and keep it in place. Allow the epoxy in the applicator to cure slightly and then apply it to the repair, giving a capping action. If the epoxy runs down and away from the repair, push it back up with the tip of the applicator. Continue to heat until the epoxy cap stays in place. Be careful not to overheat as the epoxy can be burned by temperatures higher than are comfortable to the hand. To accelerate the cure and speed the repair, continue to heat and smooth 
until the repair has a full, well-rounded and reinforced appearance. In cross-section, the final repair should look like this illustration. Typically, the system can be recharged when the epoxy is hard. When the epoxy is hard as checked with a metal object such as a screwdriver or other handy tool, the system is now ready for refrigerant. Well, that looks pretty simple. Let's review the important steps. Number one, identify the leaking area. Number two, clean by using solvent and a stainless steel brush. Number three, open up the leak with a utility knife. Number four, pull a vacuum. Number five, apply the epoxy. Number six, release the vacuum and cap. Number seven, heat until the epoxy is hard. Hopefully you will never need to repair your Modine PF heat exchanger, but if you do, now you have a method that is easy and long-lasting.